As the sun awakens, NASA keeps a weary eye on space weather. Presented by Science at NASA. June 10th, 2010. Earth and space are about to come into contact in a way that's new to human history. To make preparations, authorities in Washington, D.C. are holding a meeting. The Space Weather Enterprise Forum at the National Press Club on June 7th. Richard Fisher, head of NASA's Heliophysics Division, explains what it's all about. The sun is waking up from a deep slumber, and in the next few years we expect to see much higher levels of solar activity. At the same time, our technological society has developed an unprecedented sensitivity to solar storms. The intersection of these two events is what we're getting together to discuss. The National Academy of Sciences framed the problem two years ago in a landmark report entitled Severe Space Weather Events, Understanding Societal and Economic Impacts. It noted how people of the 21st century rely on high-tech systems for the basics of daily life. Smart power grids, GPS navigation, air travel, financial services, and emergency radio communications can all be knocked out by intense solar activity. A century-class solar storm, the Academy warned, could cause 20 times more economic damage than Hurricane Katrina. Much of the damage can be mitigated if managers know a storm is coming. Putting satellites into safe mode and disconnecting transformers can protect these assets from damaging electrical surges. Preventative action, however, requires an accurate forecasting, a job that has been assigned to NOAA. Space weather forecasting is still in its infancy, but we're making rapid progress, says Thomas Bogdan, director of NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado. Bogdan sees the collaboration between NASA and NOAA as key. NASA's fleet of heliophysics research spacecraft provide us with up-to-the-minute information about what's happening on the sun, he explains. They are an important complement to our own satellites, which focus more on the near-Earth environment. Among dozens of NASA spacecraft, he notes three of special significance. Stereo, SDO, and ACE. Stereo, short for Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, is a pair of spacecraft stationed on opposite sides of the sun with a combined view of about 90% of the stellar surface. In the past, active sunspots can hide out on the sun's far side, invisible from Earth, and then suddenly emerge over the limb, spitting flares and CMEs. Stereo makes such surprise attacks impossible. SDO, or the Solar Dynamics Observatory, is the newest addition to NASA's fleet. Just launched in February, it is able to photograph solar active regions with unprecedented spectral, temporal, and spatial resolution. Researchers can now study eruptions in exquisite detail, raising hopes that they will learn how flares work and how to predict them. SDO also monitors the sun's extreme ultraviolet output, which controls the response of Earth's atmosphere to solar variability. Bogdan's favorite NASA satellite, however, is an old one, the Advanced Composition Explorer, or ACE, launched in 1997. Where would we be without it, he wonders. ACE is a solar wind monitor. It sits upstream between the sun and earth, detecting solar wind gusts, billion ton CMEs, and radiation storms as much as 30 minutes before they hit our planet. ACE is our best early warning system, says Bogdan. It allows us to notify utility and satellite operators when a storm is about to hit. NASA spacecraft were not originally intended for operational forecasting, but it turns out that our data have practical economic and civil uses, notes Fisher. This is a good example of space science supporting modern society. 2010 marks the fourth year in a row that policymakers, researchers, legislators, and reporters have gathered in Washington, D.C. to share ideas about space weather. This year, foreign organizers plan to sharpen the focus on critical infrastructure protection. The ultimate goal is to improve the nation's ability to prepare, mitigate, and respond to potentially devastating space weather events. 
I'm going on the threshold of a new era in which space weather can be as influential in our daily lives as ordinary terrestrial weather, Fisher concludes. We take this very seriously, indeed. This story was written and read by Tony Phillips. It's presented by Science at NASA. To find more Science at NASA stories on the internet, please visit science.nasa.gov.